My name is Brett Amder. My, uh, my background is in law and entrepreneurship and computer science, as strange as that might sound. Um, I was a former lawyer, I was a law professor. While I was teaching in a law school, I went back for a master's in computer science. Um, I left there to do a, a couple of startups, um, one in the legal technology industry, one in the mortgage industry of all things, um, and since then have been in the business world um, primarily um, as an executive running sales teams at different companies of different sizes. So it's kind of a varied background and, and I'm here because I'm thrilled to be exploring the opportunities that exist at the intersection of all this that are so exciting and I know we're all thrilled to be a part of. So with that as a brief background, let me see if I can find my project here. There it is. How do you like that? Uh, we're not projecting. Are we? What do I need to do? <laughs> sure. Oh, can everyone hear me, by the way? I realize I'm not wearing this just in case. So, the background to my project um, has to do with me getting sick. Um, my project is on regression diagnostics, and I don't mean to suggest that the first thing I thought of when I got sick is that the thing that's going to make me better is regression diagnostics. Regression diagnostics and chicken soup, nothing like it. No, not that at all. Um, is this on? Can you guys hear me? No. Great. Um, no, what I mean to suggest is that when I got sick, um, I missed some of the classes that are being held here, um, which is a shame because they're very valuable, and I wanted to somehow make that up. Um, and the way I thought of doing it was to combine the shiny project that we have um, with some of the regression lessons that I missed, um, some of which were on regression diagnostics. So I thought, perfect, I'll do a shiny project that's related to regression diagnostics, learn a little bit and brush up a little bit on diagnostics, all at the same time um, learning a little bit more about coding and shiny. So that's what I did, um, and that's what you see here. Um, this is meant to be a tool for helping folks who are relatively new to regression. Uh, I should point out that this is kind of different than all of the other projects that you'll see tonight and that are part, typically part of the, the learning experience here. And that's because there's no real data set that I explored. Most of our projects involve downloading a data set, doing all sorts of exploratory analysis on this, in this particular instance, making that exploration interactive with Shiny. Um, that's what we're, what we're typically going to see and what you're going to see through the other projects tonight. Mine's not like that at all. Mine is more a question of feeding sort of pre-made data sets into the system for purposes of creating this tutorial on regression diagnostics. So this is a little different in that sense. Um, so let's dive in. Um, here's what I did. Um, I created um, a series of data sets from a well-known source of data. If you're in this world, you probably know this. It's, it's Anscombe's Quartet. Um, those are four plots that show um, different things visually but the same thing numerically. And by that I mean, I hope people can see that it might be a little hard to see. What you're seeing here is a typical regression and what we have down here is our good fit selection. Um, relatively good fit as we'll see. So this is typical least squares regression stuff. We draw the line that minimizes the, the residuals um, and that's what you see. And we see an x coefficient of 5 with an intercept of 3 um, and an r squared of um, 66, etc. Um, what's interesting about this data set, if you haven't seen it, and as I said, it is fairly well known, is that we can generate a number of other plots that don't change a thing numerically. Um, here's a much different plot, of course. We're still seeing a, 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 an x coefficient of, of 0.5. We're still seeing an intercept of 3. And yet, obviously, this is a much different graph. This, of course, is, is exponential. It's going to be a negative x squared kind of thing. Um, and linear is obviously not the best fit here. Um, and yet, we still see the same thing numerically. Um, we can change this to a couple other gra the graphs um, different data sets, and we can see that once again, we haven't changed anything numerically, um, but we obviously have a problem here with our linear fit. Um, this looks like three straight lines, um, and we just have this one outlier that's pulling our line up. Um, but yet, from a numerical perspective, nothing's changed. Um, and then finally, the fourth piece of the Anscombe's data set, sorry about that, um, I don't know, there we go, um, is that one. Um, once again, um, same x coefficient, same intercept, but now we have a whole bunch of data points of the same x value. Only one is different. It's pulling the line up. Obviously, we have some concerns about the predictive value of what we're going to get if we plug in some numbers here along that line, if the only thing that's generating that line is that one outlying x value. The point of all of this is that this is a nice way to show folks that visually you can have 
um, different plots that fit our linear model to varying degrees, um, some of them quite poorly, but not have that be shown in the numerical analysis that you get from running a traditional linear regression. So that's something that um, is, is relatively well known in, among practitioners in this field, of course, um, but not necessarily to those who are new, and I think it highlights it quite nicely. None of that is really the point, though, of, of what I put together. The point is, happens down here, um, and that is we see the diagnostics that we can apply to all this. So let's go back down to our good fit analysis, <coughs> excuse me, our good fit data set. Um, I'm not going to walk through all of the different diagnostics that have been coded up here, and they could be helpful. We don't have time for that. I'll just do a couple of them. Um, but I will note that we show a few of the assumptions that underlie an appropriate regression, the assumption associated with linearity, <coughs> variance, the constant variance of the errors, normality. Um, this isn't so much a really diagnostic, but it refers to leverage and influence, and a couple others that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, one thing to note is that as we're going through the diagnostics, we still are able to see our original data set. To that data set, we've added two things. One is the regression line. We're showing the error. And that's because the most of the diagnostics, of course, has to do with analyzing the errors. And two, we're adding the point numbers for each of these so that we can see what we're analyzing more carefully as we go through the diagnostics, and that'll make sense in a second. Um, so I'll just make a walk through a couple of these. Let's start with uh, the <coughs> normality of the errors. As I suspect many of you know, the way to test this is through a QQ plot. Um, that's quantile, quantile. And I like the way this sort of shows some things that aren't always apparent when you typically see these. It's typically a thousand points. You want them all on a relatively straight line. But with fewer points and the number, you can see some things. So what we're showing here in the QQ plot is along the y-axis, the ordered values from most negative to most positive. So if we look at our original graph, we see here that on the negative side, we have 3, 10, and 8. Well, look what we have over here. Here's point number 3, here's point number 10. Point number eight actually is on the line, although it shouldn't be, that's a long story. Um, and then we have a bunch of points that are on the line, they're shown here, and then we've got a couple others that are above the line, and they're shown here, so I think numbering those points is sort of a, a decent teaching tool. Um, and then as we go through the rest of the Anscombe's quartet plots, we can see some interesting things happening. So here we have our parabola. Um, what's interesting about this is that you see that in the QQ plot, we have pairs of values. Those are paired, those are paired, those are paired. Why is that? Because the residuals are the same. Eight and six are far from each other, but they have the same residual value. Um, 11 and nine, same thing. So here's eight and six. I said nine, sorry, that was a three. Um, but you see my point, how those pair up. And that sort of shows how a QQ plot works. We can do the same thing with our various other data sets. Again, I won't spend too much time on this. This one's pretty obvious. There's our three, our obvious biggest residual. Remember, again, these are ordered from negative to positive on the value of the residuals, three being the only one that's really high and positive, and there you see it um, as it clearly um, um, showing itself. Um, <coughs> and then finally, outlier two. What's interesting about this one, of course, is that you look over here and say, well, we've got big problems. If you look over here and you don't see them. The point being that we really do need to look at all of these different diagnostic plots, visually and graphically, for the problems to jump out at us. This looks something that's not perfect, but it's relatively straight. The issue, the reason, of course, why 8 isn't jumping out off the page here is because 8 is right on the regression line. Um, in fact, you see it right here, right smack down in the middle, um, because that's where it is. It's, it's because of its value on the regression line, it's not going to jump out in the QQ plot. Um, <coughs> we could walk through all sorts of things here. Um, I hope you're getting the idea that this can be a useful tool for seeing how these diagnostic work, diagnostics work visually. Um, this shows leverage and influence um, and Cook's distance, for those of you who know about this. Um, again, this is what, we're not here for an education session, so you know, I'm not going to go through the details of it, other than to note um, how interesting it is to be able to sort of see how this works when you can throw in some new points. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, the tool lets you put in um, new points onto your graph. So if I put in a new point at 25 and 30, um, for those of you who remember how um, um, Cook's distance and leverage works, huge leverage on the new point that we made. It's all the way over here, meaning it's very far away from the x-axis. Um, and big Cook's distance, too, um, because that 7.5 value, if you can remember how Cook's distance works, big numbers are scary. That's telling us we've got a problem here. I keep looking over at Christopher, who's our stats expert and machine learning expert, and he's smiling. So, so far, I think I'm something wrong. 
I think that's a good sign, but, but frown if I screw something up with um, So in any event, you see, you see the point here. Um, this is showing that pretty graphically. Let's put that new value right on the line. If you remembered our original equation, right, it was 0.5x plus 3, I think was our intercept. So 25, that would be half of that plus 3. 12.5, I'll just call it 15. Um, <coughs> now we see um, our new point right on the line. Um, and we see that the Cook's distance problem has kind of gone away because that point isn't pulling the line in any direction high or low. It's right on the line. Um, and therefore, you see um, the biggest one is only 0.15 rather than 7 point something. Lots and lots and lots of other things we can do with this tool. Um, I hope that I've created the impression that there's some utility to this for learning how regression diagnostics work. Um, it's by no means complete. These things never are. Um, I haven't um, done anything with multiple uh, regression yet, or multilinearity, or multi <coughs> variate. Um, so more to come on this, um, but for now I hope it can serve as, as something of a, uh, of a helpful tool for those who are looking to learn about how regression diagnostics work. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Any questions? I think other, frankly, presentations are going to be more amenable to questions. This wasn't really the Oh wow, cool, that variable was pushing that interesting observation. This is more of a tutorial, so it's less about some, some, some interesting sort of data analysis. Um, but that said, anybody have any questions? Yeah, really simple question. What are the, what are the, um, the numbers corresponding to their, their values in the original data set, which is arbitrary. Yeah. Um, so if you go back up here um, and sort of look at them, this is the, that's the order they were in here. They really mean nothing. The point to them down below is to see what happens to them as we do the various diagnostics. You know what happens to them in point twelve, but but their ordinal value means nothing. I should point out, by the way, I think I mentioned this is all R and shiny. This is a shiny project, um, and it was relatively straightforward to put this together in shiny. I mean, it really wasn't that hard um, for those of you with um, programming experience and or any R experience. If you haven't played with shiny, um, relatively straightforward.